I'm going to present a paper as titled Anomalous Gas Emission from Low Energy Nuclear Reaction of Water. Uh, basically, I am major in mechanical engineering, and the paper is, uh, has uh, uh, 18 authors together. That is uh, my research team today. Actually, I retired from National Taiwan University two years ago. I supposed to dismiss all my research work and retire. But surprisingly, not. I spent three times of after retiring. All of these are made possible by the support from Counting Group, is uh, owned by one of my good friends. He support me not retire and continue this work. And also, uh, a, a company named Mass Tech Technology. Uh, for mass spectrometry. The company manufacturing mass spectrometer for semiconductor industry in Taiwan. They help uh, mass spectrometry for me. And the National, Na National Tsinghua University uh, Department of uh, Nuclear Engineering Science, they help uh, for the study of nuclear damage of material. And also for the United States uh, University in Nevada, uh, Professor uh, Chen uh, is a uh, help for pilot plan develop in the future. And uh, also National Taiwan Normal University organizing a nuclear research team and uh, also Academia Sinica Taiwan for double check the mass spectrum metry uh, result using the other instrument. And finally, Bob Greener from Martin Friesman Memorial Project for the physics of, you know. As I say, I'm not a scientist, I'm an engineer, knowing nothing about the uh, science of uh, nuclear physics. And uh, Bob helped a lot in this. And the outline of the presentation is I come, I'm going to review some of uh, previous study and then, uh, then some recent development and also I'm going to report some analysis, the analysis of anomalous gas using mass spectrometry. Then very important that we have a discussion about how nuclear reaction can be triggered in water to produce energy. And uh, the main question for me try to answer is, is it possible to trigger nuclear reaction in water to produce energy? This is a dream of mankind. Uh, during the past two years, uh, we were devoted to the development of new prototype for commercial application. But when I told my closest family, friends, and colleagues about our incredible finding, you will see later, that water can trigger nuclear reaction and produce energy, I found they show only two kinds of faces to me. The first face, really, is they are so surprised and doubtful. Or it is best to have a dream. I hope your dream comes true. This is the second phase to me. Even though I show them a lot of scientific evidence, there is still mystery. That is, uh, this is too good to be true. Even I believe this. It, this is too good to be true. So you have, we have to be very careful to check uh, again and again. This personal opinion survey alerted me that uh, I cannot just be an engineer with my head covered, just trying to de develop new machines that can benefit the society. Even if we develop the best product, but if we cannot reasonably 
explain its physics, we will still be badly attacked by competitors. And in the end, it will still fail. This is the main reason why I decide to ask for many experts, as I pointed out earlier, uh, for many experts in different fields to do this research. Thanks, God. I am very lucky to meet many, many friends, international, especially Bob Reno. He told me a lot four years ago in ICC 22 and ICC 23. He, he told me a lot of things, but I could not understand that time because of all, I was an engineer. But after four years study, I studied very hard. I catch up something uh, with uh, Bob Greener. Uh, but long time after, I found it may be a good direction to try suggestions from Bob Greener. And I think uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, called collective effort, I keep the word. It is too good to be true in my mind. And I believe it at the last one no scientific reasons to deny them. So first, I'd like to review uh, some of previous work. We have published two papers in ICC 22 and 23 which shows that uh, cavitation and dynamic implosion of narrow bubbles is water. In, ten, in tiny space could produce excess heat or lena. The react one which we have developed is a triple pipe heat exchanger heated by vapor compression system. It's a compressor supply the hot vapor. It's a refrigerant, not water. Just heat the water through the cheap heat exchanger in tiny space. And uh, there's a past water flow controlled to create extreme cavitation. With this design, uh, we tested for a long time, uh, for about two years. The maximum COP is 4.3. And uh, some peculiar phenomena was observed. That uh, was three years ago. First, abnormally high water pressure was observed is higher than 720 bar, which ruptured the pressure gauges and the copper pipes. Second, nuclear transmutation in copper pipe was observed. And we do some observation use the uh, same as uh, electron microscope, EDX, and find that uh, uh, there are some carbon increase five times, oxygen increase six times, ferro uh, increase four times, and new element comes. And you see how the reactor is damaged by the nuclear reaction. And the second reactor we build is double pipe heat exchanger. Also, there's a past water flow through, and uh, we use steam boiler instead, uh, and to heat the water through the heat exchanger. And uh, the machine has been tested for two years. At the beginning, we got nothing. The COP always equal to one. That means no nuclear reaction. Someday, my student come over me, say, Professor, I, I got something exciting. The machine get warm, heating, heat. And the COP is 2.55. But uh, one week later, he come back to me. It disappeared. And we found there's also a damage of the equipment with uh, the rupture of the pipe. And also we do the same examination. Carbon increase three times, oxygen increase eight times, chloride and also ferro in, uh, in increase four times. And we change the different kind of design and sometimes get nothing. But if, it, if you do it right, it comes again, COP 2.2, but also one week later, damaged. And again and again. So this uh, phenomenon tells tell us that there's something uh, unusual. Uh, it's uh, against the fourth law of thermodynamics. So next, I'm going to 
introduce some recent development. After two years later, the past two years, we continue this research by developing different kind of designs of reactors and try to simplify the design. So I call it a kind of resonator, or it's called resonator. And also try to, to use a strong material and a simple structure to, for easy scale up. And during the test develop, develop of uh, these reactors, we found some anomalous non condenser gas. And we decide to collect them and uh, to examine what is this. And uh, this is the COP test facility to build in the lab. The boiler is, has a power, 10 kilowatt. And then we use gas collection unit and also including gas collector to collect gas after the machine run in steady state. And uh, then the gas samples were collect, then send it to the mass spectrometer manufacturer, Mastec company, and they has a team of experts help the mass spectrometer. And then they use a quarter pole mass spectrometer to identify what is going on, the gas. The first, we are going to know what is the mass spectrum. We take 14 gas samples from eight reactors. And it's very interesting. Uh, all the gas samples uh, no, has no significant MZ signals at uh, MZ 50 high. And uh, next, we are going to identify if there's any CO2 gas. At the beginning, at the first time we, do, we did this um, uh, mass spectrometry, and an expert in the company told me, Professor Huang, uh, how come your gas sample has so, so many CO2 gas? It's very strong, high intensity. And uh, since MZ44 signal is produced from CO2, CO2 so you see that uh, the four gas samples are from reactors without Leno because the COP is less, less, less than 1.05 or nearly one. And uh, with these four uh, gas samples, no re nuclear reactions, the K44 is the index for the CO2 gas. It shows uh, very small. And uh, with, for the uh, reactors uh, with uh, a nuclear reaction, it's very high. The highest value goes up to 71, and a lot up going to 11, 10, 12, something like that. So this gives us a very strong uh, suggest that uh, CO2 is present. And uh, secondly, we use uh, calcium hydroxide to absorb CO2 before entering mass spectrometer. If the MZ44 signal is reduced, then that means CO2 has been absorbed. Then you can prove there's a CO2 inside the gas sample. And the results found very interesting. All the uh, reactors with uh, LENA, COP greater than one, you got the signal reduction very clearly. And it shows uh, CO2, CO2 gas did exist. And next, Bob Greener uh, suggests that uh, NEO may present uh, in our uh, output gas. And we try to find fourth neon 22, but get nothing, no signal here. And then we check neon 2020 and use the argon as a reference. And also found nothing because uh, use air as a reference or below the, the reference of the air. And then 
for uh, NEON 22, we use three kinds of uh, identification method. The fourth use the uh, isotope ratio, K22, also found the same. For, for gas, without, without the nuclear reaction, the K22 always very small. And uh, for gas with nuclear reaction, the K22 very high. The highest is 56. And also we use uh, uh, some empirical uh, condition that we found the G factor always greater than one if there's a nuclear, nuclear reaction. Use this uh, observation and uh, use mathematics, uh, then we can prove that neon 22 is produced during the nuclear reaction. The third identification is using uh, calcium hydroxide to absorb CO, CO2. Because CO2 could produce interference uh, or signal to MZ22, if we absorb that, then we'll reduce interference. And the one we did that uh, used pure CO2 as a reference compared with that. And we found K24 is much larger than the reference. And then this shows uh, Neon 22 really exist. And uh, discussion. From the above uh, mass spectrometry, we found that the Neon 22 and the CO2 are present. That's definitely, that's for sure. And uh, the question is, are Neon 22 and the CO2 produced through nuclear or chemical reactions? And we guess there are some possible production mechanism of neon-22 and CO2. And then for, for the first original reaction of uh, this is from proton and O16. And then they produce oxygen-17 isotope. This is just, we guess. But very lucky, we are right. And if this is right, then nuclear reaction of O17 to O17 will produce neon 12 and carbon 12, 22 and 12, and this relation. And the carbon 12 is going to be combined with oxygen to become CO2. That's what we measured, a large quantity in the gas sample. The second question is, uh, okay, the rest of uh, O17 and C20, C12, produce our compound. First, we have already got from SEM and ADX nuclear transmutation, our copper pipe by copper and oxygen that we already found. Then we guess there are something may be converted into heavy water. It's uh, oxygen 17. And also isotope 17. Also isotope CO2 is also 17. And uh, three kinds of isotopes can be examined through MZ19, 13, and 45. And I go back to check the mass spectrometry data. Oh God, it's a uh, bingo. Uh, for 19, it's true, yeah. Or, all the gas with nuclear reaction shows uh, the, spectrum, the spectrum ratio is uh, greater than one, very high, even higher than uh, four times. And also, 33, oxygen 17, also the same. And also, uh, CO2 isotope, also the same. So, the gas produced in nano of water is uh, isotope 22 neon, CO2 normal, and also isotope heavy water, heavy oxygen water, and isotope O2, O17, isotope CO2, O17. All these isotopes, I think, never come from contamination during the experiment. So, the conclusion is uh, energy from water seems possible.
One of the other evidence we use flame test. It shows orange color. Thank you very much. We, I think we check the mass spec from each one. Okay, okay, talk later. Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you, uh, what about the mass of seventy-two, pure or to oxygen? No equilibrium. Yeah, little bit. No more. It's a dissolved oxygen uh -huh. comes out. Just uh, uh, there's no another speech. No, nothing special, but okay. the dissolved okay. oxygen. Yeah. Uh, What is the different reactors? Uh -huh. Eight different reactors. Yes, yes. The data from that. So different reactor. We want the test continuous uh -huh. for three or four hours and take data. And about the, uh, excuse me, uh, before uh, the time scale of the excess power, not 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 for the uh, mass spectrometer. I didn't share too much data on that. So mm -hmm. excess power is just we present uh, use uh, COPX. Okay, the excess heat is almost constant. Yeah, steady, steady, okay. steady state. Okay. Can, can, I, can I clarify very quickly? So just to, in multiple reactors, only those that produce excess heat, did you see synthesis of the rare isotope neon 22? but did not see the production of the common isotope, which is 80 something, 90 something percent neon 20 or neon 21. If, if you did, really did see neon 22, then it is quite conclusive that it cannot be contamination. And then secondly, you saw the synthesis of oxygen 17 and confirmed by the production of O16, O17, CO16, O17, and uh, oxygen, oxygen 17. Yeah, it's, uh, only in excess heat reactors. For example, uh, we are, we, the, uh, the identification of uh, heavy water is MZ19. It's difficult because the water contains HDO, heavy nitrogen water. And we, we distinguish with uh, number tube 9, it's just steam, not through reactor. Use this as a criteria. And the steam water contains uh, HDO, the mesma uh, amount. So with that data, you see steam contains and the ratio of isotope is 1.1. It's a criteria. Once you got the R198 greater than 1.1, that means uh, MZ19 exists, that is heavy water. Yes, and one, one, one last point. I actually suggested to him by accident that he would see the on 21 over the on 22. And he went away, he came back a year later and said, We didn't find any on 21, we found the on 22. And that's what he should have done. Okay, thanks for being here.
Thank you.